questions and answer session. And uh, I'm really happy that we are back on track this evening and uh, I'm really pleased also to introduce Dr. Andrus Payeda, who will be answering all the questions that will pop up in your heads, our dear patients, ladies and gentlemen as well. <laughs> um, I'm also happy to say that for the first time we are in our new clinic, uh, um, settling this uh, live session, and uh, it's always good to be home, <laughs> of course. And uh, what else I wanted to say is that uh, during upcoming weeks, we will share lots of news from our new new clinic. Uh, we are preparing a lot of material, and please make sure that you follow us on our account on Facebook and you will be really updated. And this session will uh, take about one hour. So everyone who will join us later, I hope will be happy and brave enough <laughs> uh, to participate, to ask all the questions that will, uh, will be interesting regarding the plastic surgery. Uh, so I think that we can start with some of the questions we have received previously. Uh, on the on, on our comment section. So, Dr. Andrus Payeda. Yes. <laughs> we may start? Yes, please. Okay, okay. <clears throat> uh, so, patient Lori Gabriela has asked a very good question and uh, it is about the Brazilian buttock lift. She's writing, uh, when doing bu Brazilian buttock lift, can you just inject fat above the muscle in order to avoid fat embolism. Doctor, what would you say? Yes, uh, that's a very good question. Um, and in my practice, I always inject uh, only the, 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 the fat tissue. I never go deeper and never inject the, the, the muscle. I think, you know, it's dangerous. Injecting muscle is not, not good. And nowadays it's recommended not to do it uh, every time you inject it. You inject it only relatively superficial, never go deep into the muscle. That's the, the proper and the safe way to perform this, this procedure. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, one more question by Alison. She uh, wrote, Hi, I've already had a fleur de lis tummy tuck, and, but I have still lots of access uh, on hips and around my bum. Do you do the hips and bum like a lower body lift? Yeah, so um, I think floor de is a very good procedure, but it's, it's meant for your abdomen to remove the skin of your abdomen. Uh, with this procedure, you can give a very little um, improvement to the back. So mm -hmm. if you have a lot of loose skin on the back, it's recommended to you know, have another consultation with the doctors first, of course, photos then probably come to the clinic and uh, be examined and we will decide whether you need sort of circumferential body lift or thigh lift. So it's, it's again, very specific and, you know, from patient to patient it can yeah, change. It, it depends. It depends, so, definitely. Alison, what we would recommend you is um, please take pictures of the problematic areas that you consider you have on the, on the back and on your, on your thighs. Send to your manager and I'm sure that we will find a, a solution right now. And depending on uh, the date when you had the surgery, the fleur de lis is still a pretty big procedure. Yeah. So maybe you will need to wait like four or five months or... Yeah, that's uh, for the swelling to, to go yeah, down. To, for the swelling to go down and uh, for the body to recover and to have the second stage surgery performed and to have your body finally fixed. Yeah. <clears throat> yes, I see that uh, you participants, our, our viewers and participants are not very... Um, uh, active. Kelly, thank you for, for your kind words. Fantastic work. We are trying. But dear ladies and gentlemen, if you have questions, just do not hesitate and write them right below this live video. And meanwhile, we are waiting for your new questions so we can go back to the comments we have already received, right? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, there is another question. Uh, Ms. Louise Cox has asked uh, is if, in case of the unlikely event, uh, that the procedure doesn't go right, you know, or like wanted, uh, what are the patient's options to have it fixed? So, 
Yeah, so uh, again, this is all, all, always a question and um, every time you have a surgery, you have to consider this, that not all the surgeries can go according to plan and if something happens, always you have to wait for the, um, for the swelling to go down and evaluate the final outcome, how it looks. How uh, Six. Well, it depends. With okay. with uh, with body surgery is about six months. Mm -hmm. Let's say the final result. With the nose is a little bit more. It's usually twelve months. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, you know you have to discuss everything with your surgeon. And of course, we want our patients to be happy. So uh, we we always welcome to to discuss your issues, and we will yeah. do a revision surgery if needed. Yeah. So if we see that the revision surgery is necessary to reach this final result we all patients are welcome to yeah. the clinic yeah after after we really are sure that uh, well the necessary amount of time has been waited and um, uh, surger, surgeon will be happy you know to perform free of charge of correction they will be only need to pay for anesthetic uh, anesthesia your stay at the, at the, the hospital so, yeah. so yeah so final result still should be a happy patient and uh, you here is a very good question for you as a as a surgeon who specializes in rhinoplasty. <laughs> yeah. What is the swelling time for rhinoplasty? Mrs. Katinka Martinson Inger is asking. Okay, so swelling time. Yes, yeah, swelling mm -hmm. time. So again, to evaluate your final final result, it's going to take 12 months, one year. Uh, but you definitely can see result after three months, six months, and you can always, you know, you are welcome to post uh, pictures or to update your surgeon with the progress, mm -hmm. how your swelling is going down after, let's say, six months. It's, yeah. it's, it's definitely. But, you know, final, final result definitely after one year. Mm -hmm. So one year is the time patients have to wait in order to have finally see this result. All right, and uh, Lorenta Lal is asking, she, she's writing, I was in Lithuania on Monday, 11th of February. I had book plastic, so tummy tuck, surgery, and liposuction. My question is, how long should I lay on my back and have pillows under my legs? Can I sleep on my side? And for how long do you think the pain on my back should stay? What was the procedure that he The she... procedure was uh, tummy tuck surgery and liposuction. Um, yeah, so the, the, I think, uh, I think if you're feeling all right, you can start lying on your side and uh, on your, on your tummy two, three weeks after the surgery, you will not do any damage. Mm -hmm. Um, with the back pain, you have to, you have to, you know, see what's, what's wrong with your back. If you had the back problems before the surgery, so surgery is sort of trauma to you. So mm -hmm. you've been lying in the bed, you've been lying on yeah. the operating table. So that pain in the, in, the, in the back can increase. But try to stay active, try to move, and usually this helps to reduce that pain. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, if, if it doesn't, you need to see a doctor, your own doctor, or you can update uh, with the problems us, please. Yeah. For recommendations, always feel free to ask. Yeah. Try the emails and ask. Okay, um, Miss Kelly Burton is asking, she's writing, I'm uh, worried about having a mommy makeover because I have a two-year-old. How long would it be before I can pick my, up my child? Two-year-old. Two-year-old. So two-year-old is about 10 kilos, I would, I would think. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it, again, it, the problem is with your muscles. If your mm -hmm. if your muscles been sutured, they have been repaired, you cannot lift five. more than five kilos for three, two, three months. Mm -hmm. I would say that's that's the same safe period. So for that time, ask daddy, ask grandpa, <laughs> ask uh, you know anybody, anybody to help to you with that with, for, with mm -hmm. that. It's for your own sake and try to rest for that time. Yeah. Two, first two months are crucial after yeah, this Yeah, definitely. Of really. But the more you more you stay without lifting, the better, I would say. Yeah. So patience is the key. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And uh, here we have one more uh, question. 
Miss D. D. Ravenhill is asking, would like to know the difference of a deep plane and ordinary mass facelift. I think these the terms are very similar. Usually mm -hmm. nowadays, superficial facelift or where the, 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 the face is lifted only using the skin is uh, very rare. I don't think any of the modern surgeon performs this surgery anymore. Um, the long, you know, long term results with, you know, lifting with the skin, they are no good. So mm -hmm. nowadays everybody does SMAS, SMAS lift. And I think the deep plane lift and SMAS lift is, should be used as a synonyms. As a synonym, yeah, so, so that's the, simple, the, the, the scientific the, terminology, right? Yeah, it's just the terms that you use as a synonym. So, mm -hmm. um, personally, I think, you know, SMAS lift, that's the, you know, very clear um, thing to understand what, what we're doing and uh, how the procedure is performed. Mm -hmm. And deep lane lift, what does it include? Um, usually deep lane lift, SMAS lift, usually it's same as a classical facelift. So what, what it does, we do a... Uh, incision around your ears in mm -hmm. front and behind and we lift your mid face and uh, the neck just to, to correct the nasal labial folds the the corners of the lift of the lips um, mm -hmm. uh, to give a nice jawline and of course remove the sagging skin on the neck okay thank you doctor yes one more question um, Royella is asking, if I want a Brazilian butt lift with liposuction and tummy tuck, which do I do first? Brazilian butt lift with liposuction and tummy tuck. Um, it, in, in, in some cases, it's possible to do all these things together, uh, but not all the cases. Um, you, you have to send pictures and I will, you know, I will comment uh, what, what procedure is the best for you. Again, Aggressive liposuction and tummy tuck, these two procedures, sometimes they, they don't go together that well because we do big incisions mm -hmm. and the extensive huge liposuction can interfere with the blood circulation and you can end up with problems, healing problems mm -hmm. of, the, of, the, of the wounds. Um, so again, you have to really um, talk with your surgeon about how extensive you can go um, and I want my patients to be as safe as possible yeah safe just first of course yeah um and if i i would well i would recommend for the patients if these two procedures tummy tuck and brazilian buttock lift could not be performed together you simply have to ask yourself which area bothers you more and start with this one which yeah. you really want to fix first so um let's go further Ms. Tanya is asking, instead of traveling to Oslo for a consultation, uh, is traveling to Kaunas the week before estimated operation an option? Of course. <laughs> yeah, I think it's, it's a very, you know, good thing just to come for a consultation. Usually the flights are not, not a problem and we can, you know, schedule yeah. you a consultation <clears throat> so, so that it's comfortable for you to fly back yeah. home. I would say there are three options. You either can send the pictures and be, have the evaluation uh, online and then the consultation pre or the surgery, which would, you know, give the finalized volume of the surgery. And the second option is, which is pretty rare that patients come to CONAS for only consultation. Uh, but of course it's possible. And if you can let yourself travel, if you can have a, a couple of days off, uh, it would be also a good thing. And the third option is of course, consultations in uh, biggest cities which we are performing, performing. regularly uh, so Oslo, Stockholm, Gothenburg and London is so far and I, I think the map will get broader soon please follow us on Facebook for news about that <laughs> and uh, so whenever suits you best you can choose that but we will really help you implement your plan yeah so we can go uh, further Mm -hmm. Jenny West uh, is asking, what does sharp shooting pains mean in your incisions after surgery? Well, that probably mean? that means that you are healing. Um, oh, good thing. Um, <laughs> uh, it, you know, I have to, you know, I have to ask what, what, what are the areas, uh, you know, that the incision been done. But, mm -hmm. 
usually, you know, little nerve endings if they're trying to regrow and find their way that can give you that shooting sensation. Oh, mm -hmm. um, usually they disappear with time. So again, patience and uh, I think everything should should solve by itself. Just mm -hmm. just for wait for it. How long, doctor? Do you think it, it's normal? I think to feel I think like that? I think it's normal to feel something like that for two or three months and afterwards it should should be gone. Uh, in rare cases, it can last longer. But, uh, you know, if you have this pain more than two or three months, please, please contact us and we will try to, to help you. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, one more lady, uh, Sadia, is asking, to be eligible for a mamma mia cover, what do you look for in the blood test results? What should the levels be of each thing you're looking for? So what Regarding the blood, blood tests, tests mm -hmm. that we usually take before the surgery is general blood count and uh, blood clots, just to make sure that your blood is clotting um, within normal normal range. Um, the general blood test, it, it very important is your hemoglobin, so to make sure that your 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 iron level is right, and then. Uh, of course, I, you know, you always check for the generalized infection to make sure that you are healthy in general. You don't have any uh, hidden infection that, mm -hmm. uh, well, for example, in your, I don't know, in your throat or somewhere else that can give trouble after the surgery. Um, yeah, so these, these two things are the most important. But, uh, of course, first you talk with the patient and, you know, just ask how he feels and if, if, if everything is fine. The blood test is just a secondary thing to make sure that everything is fine with you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, but as a precaution, we uh, recommend for patients to have a general blood count test performed at home about one month or two months before the planned surgery. So we could, we would have time to fix something if there is something not yeah. uh, according to... Yeah. to or you the, don't waste, you know, your trip here. Yeah. Because sometimes we have to cancel if your blood test is not right. So, but or it's for your own safety. Cancel or well, more often, I would say, reduce the planned volume of the surgery. Yeah. yeah, especially when the hemoglobin level is a little bit too low uh, than it is supposed to be. So it's supposed to be about 130, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's go further. We have more comments, and uh, Miss Rayella is asking. If I want to have a Brazilian buttock lift, liposuction, tummy tuck, and breast implants, can I have it done all at one time? Or which ones do I do first? Yeah, I, I think if you are healthy, young, I think mm -hmm. it's possible to do breast augmentation and Brazilian butt lift with, uh, with liposuction. That's, mm -hmm. that's, that's not a problem. But there is also a tummy tuck. Involved oh, in and tummy tuck is involved. And tummy tuck. Uh, okay, then, then we have to think. Then we mm -hmm. have to think because um, extensive surgeries are not, not probably not the best thing. Of course, two two surgeries combined together should shouldn't be a problem, but uh, you know, three surgeries combining together, mm -hmm. we should you know <coughs> we should really discuss this. Then you come to the to yeah. the clinic. I want to examine you. I want to see all the blood tests and so on, and then we will um, decide whether we can go for for bigger plan. Yeah. <coughs> I would say that, Rayella, uh, you are interested in kind of mummy makeover uh, because it's tummy tuck and breast augmentation. Maybe there would be a need for a lift as well. We do, yeah. do not know that before we haven't seen your case. Um, but after that, if we couldn't perform everything at once, six months later, we could actually finalize your plan for the surgery yeah. of the Brazilian buttock lift as well. Okay, let's go further. Um, Katerina. Uh, Katerina is asking, she is writing, <laughs> to be precise. Hi, I'm going to a consultation in Gothenburg. Very nice, Katerina. We'll see you there. <laughs> I want to do something about my thighs and butt, but I'm afraid of scars. Is it possible to do lift of thighs without scars on them? Well, lifting of thighs without scars is not an option. You know, if we if we cut part of the your thighs of the loose skin, there's gonna be definitely a scar after mm -hmm. the surgery. But again, 
some some patients they think they need a thigh lift but you know again send us pictures and maybe liposuction alone will give you an, a nice nice improvement yeah liposuction will give you minimal scars liposuction yeah it really does give only yeah. minimal scars so um and please do you know update us with the pictures tell tell what your expectations are and i will i will I will help you. I will comment on those and tell you what what to yeah. expect. But Katrina, if you are coming to a consultation in Gothenburg, so we will definitely have enough time to discuss all yeah. the options for you, and I am sure that we will find the best solution. Okay, and um, again, about question about the facelift. And Miss Didi is asking, would this mask? correct the neck or would a separate neck lift be the norm? Dr. Poyeda, do you do facelifts? I know yeah. that you do. <laughs> yes, I, I do facelifts and <laughs> let, let me explain you a little bit. Yeah. Well, the, 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 this mass is um, um, it's, 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 it's a layer of, of tissue that you can find in the, in the face. That layer down, down low uh, in the neck is, becomes platysma. It's the muscle that is very superficial, and you, we use that muscle to uh, stretch the, the neck. So basically, if we call about smas lift, we call about platysma, and that's that sort of same same thing. Um, so at the end, if you are having a smas lift, usually you will get a result on the on your neck as well. You don't need a separate procedure for that. Mm -hmm. Okay, and. Uh... One more question by Karyana is, in what circumstances would you be refused surgery? So I guess we again are talking about blood. Yes, we, we are talking about then the, the, the blood tests. If, if, if we see that you are not fit for the surgery, if your hemoglobin level is too low, or we see that you are sort of have an infection that, mm -hmm. that, that may be dangerous, not before the surgery but after the surgery um, and of course expectations if you if you think that you can you know you can change more than we can do it's we have to refuse you we, yes, well it's uh, it's not worth operating just for the sake yeah, of that maybe operation. that maybe covers patients who have a really high body mass index yes again mm -hmm. high body mass in index as well but uh, always you know with the tummy tucks if of course usually our body mass index is about 30 that we whether refuse or not yeah it's but the edge, but yeah mm -hmm. but always please even you are if you are in doubt if for example or if, if you if your body mass index is higher than higher that. than that mm -hmm. uh, for example if it's 32 or 33 please send us pictures yeah. send us you know what are your expectation and there is always possibility that we might help you of course. probably the the with the high higher body in mass index the the end result will not be as satisfactory as, right? as, satisfactory mm -hmm. as you know as you would expect but you know for the right patient, if he is, you know, expecting, you know, just an improvement, and I can, you know, probably we can we can do with the, with the even higher body yeah. mass index that, than than normal. And for example, breast reduction. Yeah, that's is, one is of the examples. Is this kind of surgeries that is is not uh, very, you know, sensitive to a body mass index? So we really can help patients with even high body yeah. mass index, and also maybe there are some, I don't know side diseases that are also um, kind yeah of well contradiction for the surgery yes of course there are like many of those but um, you have to just tell your surgeon as yeah. as much as possible about, about your, your general health, general. health. Mm -hmm. uh, i mean even though you think this is not important not relevant please tell us we will tell you that it's not important mm -hmm. but as much information to be provided as possible. Yes, so right. I think that's the yeah. that's the safest way to For approach that, surgery. For that, we ask our patients to fill the plastic surgery health declaration form, where you can really write everything down, and so we could have a really good and objective view of your health in advance. Okay, and uh, Jenny is writing. You did a great job of my 
BA and lift and my mother's thighs and upper eyelids. Thank you, Jenny and Jan. Great surgeon. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So best, 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 best greetings and best wishes from, from Konos. Uh, <laughs> I hope you are recovering well. Okay. Um, and Natalie is saying hello. Hello, Natalie. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, and Kariani is writing that uh, she is having uh, rhinoplasty on April 1st and she already booked tests in the UK and I think that's a very good thing to do. Um, <laughs> Ali Williams. Hi, Ali. Uh, you are having, yes, your breast enlargement on the 26th of March. She's writing that she's having the surgery with your doctor mm -hmm. and she has no idea what size she wants still. So how do we pick size? What is our methodology mm -hmm. about the size? Um, yes, yeah, so first thing I always ask my patients what they want from the surgery. Um, do you want your breast to be, you know, huge shouting out that you, you have a big, nice breast? And do you like, um, you know, going out in a, in a I don't know, nightclubs? You, do you like lying on the beach and showing everybody, everybody that, that this is what you have? Um, some patients on the opposite, they say that I want to be very minimalistic and uh, just have a very nice improvement, but still be very natural. Um, so it, in, in, in a way, it's you who decide what size to go for. But of course, there are some limitations. Usually, usually these limitations are the width of your breast. I cannot put implants bigger mm -hmm. than, than, your, than, than the patient, for example. So. Um, you can always, you know, there is a range that you can choose, but uh, um, I will help you and uh, we, I'm pretty sure we will find the, the, best, the, the best size the, that, that suits just right for you. Yeah. Okay, and uh, there was a question in our group also by Tracy. Uh, she's writing, um, I hope you don't mind me asking about uh, what your iron levels need to be for them to, uh, for us to operate. Uh, as mine have been up and down and was I was worried about booking flies, uh, paying deposits and so on. And it, she would be terribly disappointed if, you know, she comes here and uh, no we find out that it's performed. not possible to perform. Well, so once again about well, the normal, iron levels. Normal ranges of iron levels, it depends from laboratory to laboratory. But usually they are between 110 and 140, something like that. So again, if you want to be 100% sure with, with, the, with the bookings of, of flights and then so on, so that they, they don't go to the waste, please do back home a general blood count and yeah. that will you know that will be your <clears throat> insurance insurance yes and if we see that the levels are not satisfactory yeah. you can simply fix the blood with uh, taking supplements and yeah. uh, it will be okay it should be fine within yeah. some time and also denise louis just just joined us and she's she said that she missed answers about the facelift so I just assure, would like to assure everyone that this live question answer session will be um, here, um, uh, you know, recorded. So you will be able to look at it one more time anytime you want. It will be placed in our web uh, Facebook page. So yeah, let's go back to live comments here below. Mm -hmm. Hi, Bettina is asking, hi, where can I can want to see your prices and mommy makeover? <laughs> Bettina, uh, our prices, of course, uh, approximate prices are listed in our website. But uh, in order to achieve, you know, your individual price, we need to see your pictures. Standard price for mommy makeover that includes tummy tuck and breast uplift with implants is 5,600 euros. But sometimes surgeons see pictures and these can tell that in order to achieve the best possible result, there may be need for additional liposuction on some areas, or sometimes you do not need a, an uplift and only, you know, an implant. So, you know, it every case is very individual. So in order to get an approximate price for you, is uh, the best way is to send pictures of all the problematic areas from all sides and uh, in good 
lightning and well focused. <laughs> yeah, and good background, please. And good background. <laughs> okay. Mm. Let's get back. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ali, thank you so much. See you in five weeks' time. Can't wait. I was there last year for Tommy Tuck and I'm over the moon. <laughs> we, have, we will be really happy, Ali, to see you here and especially, you know, in our new home. So I am, I'm sure that you will be really excited. Uh, yeah, Denise is asking, do all surgeons at clinic offer facelift? Uh, I think most of the surgeons <laughs> here at the clinic, they, they offer you a facelift. Um, I'm not sure about one, but, um, well, yeah. just, just let us know what, what you want and yeah. definitely uh, we'll help you with that, with your, with your face mm -hmm. and the facelift, the, with the procedure. Four out of five specializes in face procedures. Um, and I'm sure that you will have yeah, very great, gold, golden great hands. <laughs> All right. And uh, while we are uh, waiting for new questions here, uh, I'll get back to the comments we had got uh, before. Yes. So. Mm -hmm. Milagra. Milagro was uh, writing pretty long comment, and I think it is a very interesting one. Um, is lipos? Uh, she actually wrote in Norwegian, but we got that translated in English. So, <laughs> okay. uh, is liposuction included in operations such as stomach tuck, armpit, and tie plasty? Yeah, thank you for the question. It's. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, again, very individual, and usually with my tummy tucks, and I perform them, usually I, I do a little bit of the liposuction to the, to the middle part. If there is a need. If there is a need. Well, in most cases, let's say 90% of the cases, this gives you a little bit more flap mobility. You can stretch a little bit more of the skin. Mm -hmm. um, so usually that, that little liposuction that I do for, you know, for skin to be more mobile, that is uh, included in the tummy tuck price, mm -hmm. but if you want to go for the you know your sides, your 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 back, back um, that's definitely you know another area, and you have to yeah, pay a little bit extra. Extra because it's also extra time. Uh, yeah, it's in extra the time. Operating room and work by all the team. Yes, and we have usually we turn the patient around, so that yeah. that that takes time, and the mm -hmm. time is expensive here. Mm -hmm. And uh, what about armpit and tie plastic? And yeah, I think I think that's the the same story. If 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 there is just you know a little bit of the of the of the fat, usually I do liposuction just yeah, to make those you know mobile mm -hmm. more, so I can remove more of the loose skin. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's not it's not always the main goal always of the surgery. yes exactly the main goal of the surgery is to remove the loose skin that you have. Mm -hmm. um, so we will again discuss this during our consultation before the surgery and I will tell you exactly whether you need it or not. Mm -hmm. And Milagra has also asked, uh, is it possible to perform breast uplift through the nipple only if the breast, breasts are really large and hanging a lot? Uh, only through the nipple? Probably, probably not. Probably not. Probably not. There is a technique where you do breast uplift with the... With the with the that involves only the ni the nipple or aureola to be more precise, um, but if you have a huge breast, you you will have you will end up with the T inverted T incision because um, you know using the nipple will not be enough. Mm -hmm. So and I see that we have received more um, more questions here in the comment section under our video. Denise is asking, uh, Doctor, what is the recovery time from facelift? Um, well, recovery time, then um, usually facelifts are not very painful. Mm -hmm. It's the swe swelling that keeps you a little bit discomfortable and not, not comfortable, the, 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 the right way to say it. Um, so, you know, second or third day after the surgery you will be pretty fit to move and walk around of course you're going to be swollen on the face but it should not be painful it will be just uncomfortable um result wise and you know to see the 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 final outcome it will take around three months 
Uh, so those three months going to be the time then all the swelling will go back. Your your wounds will heal. You you will see how how wide is your scar, where is your scar, um, and you will be able to evaluate. You know how was how was the procedure done. So mm -hmm. wait three months. That's three I think the, the 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 time to average time for average the time yes mm -hmm. to to wait for it. Mm -hmm. um, if you're considering sort of correction or, or something like that after facelift of course three months is not enough you have to wait at least six months just to make sure that you are stable with the uh, with the outcome, with the outcome. and then and sure. then you change because mm -hmm. you know operating on thing that is not stable mm -hmm. and will change on time it's it's not wise mm -hmm. okay and there was also a question by a uh, Charlie Anim, <laughs> she is writing, hello, do you offer reverse tummy tuck for people who have loose skin in the top of stomach and already have scars on the breasts? Yes, there is yeah. a procedure like this. Mm -hmm. Definitely it's not a very popular one, but if we see indication, we yeah. can use the scars yeah. under, well, well, under, under, the under the breast yeah, to uh, remove that, 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 that part of the skin that is loose on the upper upper belly. That's that's definitely an that's option. That's also a technique. Yeah, yeah, it's really a rare thing, but sometimes yeah. there are these yes. rare indications. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So, what else we have here? We have a question in Norwegian by Suzanne, and it's translated <laughs> right now. And uh, she's asking, "Do you have anything that can reduce scars after breast lift?" Um. Usually for my patients, I recommend uh, using the, the tape that we provide. The brown tape, this is a very, very good one. It's very affordable. Um, you just keep on taping them, the scars, for two or three months after the surgery, and I think they, they give you pretty good results. If you, if you can afford it, definitely buy some uh, silicone cream mm -hmm. or silicone tape, mm -hmm. and you can apply that that cream or, or, or silicon tape, but it's definitely more expensive than the regular one. Um, worst case scenario, if, if, you, if you have an ugly scars, they are very wide and they are sort of hypertrophic, uh, then you need to, of course, send us pictures and we will evaluate. There is, um, there is treatment for that as well. Um, one, one step is to try to do the hormone injections to the, to the scar just to make the blood circulation reduce and usually that reduces the the redness of the scar and you know growing of the scar mm -hmm. and the, you know last thing that we can offer is to to cut the scars out and suture everything make a again new one. make a new one then let 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 hope that you know this time it's going to be a smaller one mm -hmm. um, and usually it's the case since since the you know the tension um, if you wait after your initial procedure three or six months, usually the tension is reduced, and then, you know, you just reduce the scar and put it together, the 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 uh, wound mm -hmm. uh, edges of the wound, and usually they heal much much better. Yeah. So the smaller the tension is, yeah, the better the, better the, the scar, will scar be. heals. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, doctor. Uh, and Julia is asking. What's involved with the loose skin around the bum, back and upper legs due to weight loss? Weight loss. What's mm -hmm. involved? What procedure I can offer? Um, mm -hmm. Well, usually this happens after massive weight loss. Um, so either a circumferential body lift is the procedure for you. Um, again, I have to evaluate the, the pictures on, on the thighs. Yeah. Um, Usually the circumferential body lift improves the outer thighs, but not inner thighs. So um, probably for inner thighs you will have, you know, you to will have to, another, to come to, to for, for another, another round, surgery, for yeah, another, another surgery. Round. Because, um, yeah, this 360 circumferential tummy tuck is a pretty huge Yeah, pretty surgery, extensive surgery. Extensive there are, you know, long, long um, wound that, uh, the that you, yes, that you have to deal with. So. Mm -hmm. I would not suggest doing uh, any more areas. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And Riella is asking, to have a Brazilian buttock lift, where do you get the fat from on my body? Is that not liposuction? 
Yeah, definitely we're using liposuction yeah, to is. get the, the, the fat out of your, of your, of your body. There is, no, there is no chances that we, we're taking the fat from, from other person or from, mm. from elsewhere. It's, it's your fat that can be injected only. And this is very, very important. There is no question for that. So mm -hmm. uh, with Brazilian butt lift is procedure where we reshape not only your buttocks, but, you know, give you sort of hourglass shape to your waist, reduce the waist and put everything to your bum so that you end up with more curvy figure. Mm -hmm. Doctor, are there cases when a patient does not have enough fat? For a of course, result. yeah. Of course, there are cases. Mm -hmm. um, in that case, um, we will offer you uh, buttocks implants. Um, but again, you know, these are cases. Then body mass index is below twenty, or even less than that. So mm -hmm. as long as you are twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-something, then 20 something, there should I be some fat hidden we'll, somewhere. We'll <laughs> definitely find some fat, you know, around yeah, here. Yeah, they can find them anywhere. Yeah. All we'll right. Try to do our best. <laughs> Uh, and actually, I have uh, had uh, several questions that uh, girls really came and they were in consultations that we perform live, you know, in this, uh, in abroad. Uh, a girl, really thin one, comes and she doesn't have any fat and she's asking, doctor, should I gain some? Um, well, if you, again, if you are, your body mass index is like 19 or 20, then, you know, gaining... It would be healthy to gain something. Yeah, probably that would be, you know, uh -huh. beneficial to you to, mm -hmm. to gain some weight. Um, if you are 27 or 28 with your body mass index, it, don't, don't bother. We'll definitely find some good fat for you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right, so let's get back to the comments. And Ms. Katinka is asking, is it true that... Um, is it true that one can massage your nose for swelling to go down? And how? Is there a technique for that? Well, I think definitely there is some, some truth in it. It's not general scientific truth that, you know, scientists have been working on and they say that massage can, can reduce the swelling. Um, I think that massage will, will definitely do no harm to you. So you can, you know, touch your nose a little bit, try to massage it. Um, I'm pretty sure you know you can find something on YouTube that can can give you some tips. Um, probably, you know, don't expect something you know miracles with massage. Um, apply it to yourself, see how it goes. But it's 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 not the biggest thing, uh, you know, that the, the massage itself. Mm -hmm. Okay, and just uh, one uh, note for all, everyone who are watching: we have 15 minutes left 15 minutes the, about 15 minutes left the but time the, is passing the yeah. time is really fast so if you have something to ask hurry up all right and we'll get back to the comments mm. all right uh, miss Didi is asking is surgical glue a replacement for stitches what would be i don't think it's a replacement for for stitches it's a replacement sometimes it's a replacement uh, for bandages and uh, Sometimes I, I like applying, you know, surgical glue to the places where bandages, they don't stick well. Mm -hmm. For example, in cases where I do the thigh lifts, thigh lift, it's, it's, it's wise to, to put some, um, some medical glue to, to give extra protection. Um, usually, I, you know, I still stitch the, the, the wound, the, the edges of the skin. It's, it's, it's an on top. Thing, the glue, not instead of stitches. Mm -hmm. That's so that's like how it, it in my hands. That's how it works. Thing. Yeah, yeah. All right, thank you. And uh, Charlie is asking, what is the recovery time for tummy tuck, and uh, can you lift, swim, or go on holiday? So that's again, I think uh, that's about yeah. the same recommendations. Same recommendations. Mm -hmm. uh, you cannot you cannot go to the swimming pool. You cannot go to the you know to the bath. Um, until all your wounds are healed. Yeah, there's so, no secretion. Yeah, if you have secretion, if you have open wounds, no, no, no water. Um, so I think that as long as your your wounds are healed, and if it goes according to plan, it should take you about two, three weeks. Um, then you can start swimming, for example. You know, go have a bath and so on. 
but uh, no hard exercises in the in the swimming pool or or exercises in general so you have to wait for two three months to for the swelling to come down only then you can start with mild physical activity um, and after six months probably you can come back to to your normal daily physical activity go back to gym and so on mm -hmm. thank you and Karen is asking with a breast uplift do you get a better result with a small implant well, what what is small implant? That's that's always a question. Mm -hmm. uh, for for you know for 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 a small girl, three or four hundred can be even big. For a big huge big big girl, mm -hmm. uh, three or four hundred will be nothing. So mm -hmm. that's that's always a question. But in you know my philosophy is always, don't go for the biggest implants that you can because biggest bigger mm -hmm. implant can give you bigger problems. Remember, we all have to obey the, the the gravity so that's a very important thing so bigger implants they have more chances of sagging down yeah. Um, so yeah always always think about the gravity that's mm -hmm. that's that's very important in the long term it really counts yeah <laughs> okay and um, Sadia is asking do you use the solvable stitches Yes, yeah. we now in my practice all my stitches are dissolvable, apart from ear pinning, I guess. Yeah, that's the only place Facial that I still. areas. Yeah, yeah I, for for ear pinning. So that's the only place where I still use non-dissolvable stitches, and they are hidden inside. They are meant for cartilage to keep it in place. But all the other stitches, they are dissolvable and. Uh, they they have different levels of dissolvability, so that means that some stitches will dissolve in uh, in a week. Maybe some stitches will dissolve in three four months, and some will stay for half a year. So different stitches for different areas. Yeah, and what I would like to mention here that we changed to only dissolvable stitches last year because only for our patient's sake actually because it's really very comfortable when you come back home and you do not have to go to the clinic somewhere at home to find a, a surgeon or a, a medical practitioner who could take uh, you know the stitches out so we just removed the hassle regarding that and uh, it's really I think it's a good thing to, to, to be able to take care about your wound yourself at home without any, without yeah. any problems Okay, so let's go back to the comments. We still have like 10 minutes left and Didi is asking, drains. I was told 10 years ago by a surgeon that drains increase infection and the body is capable of healing without drains. What is your opinion about during, drains? Doctor? During infections or during... N n that drains are causing, oh. they, no, they, oh, they're not they're causing, causing infection. but they increase the risk of infection. Yeah, well, it's it's again we can discuss about this, and there are you know many opinions whether it drains or not. Well, I think there's definitely if you have a drain, there's a you know a gate for infection to come in. So usually we don't keep the drains for long periods, only a few days if needed, four or five. But every time we keep the drains in, we cover you with antibiotics. Um, in you know regarding the tummy tucks. Um, now, usually I try to avoid them. If you use special technique where you, you know, very carefully suture, you know, the flap to the muscle and leave no dead space, I think drains are not needed. Um, but again, if it's huge liposuction, I think drains are important because after huge mm -hmm. liposuctions, there are always fluid inside, after, you know, left. And during your, you know, second third day you will see you know swelling that is bigger than normal so definitely that fluid needs to be removed and that was that what drains do, do. Um, so again it's very personal and your surgeon will will advise you whether and tell you why he needs drains and uh, whether he's gonna put drains after the surgery or not so and, yeah and why the reasons are also yeah so yeah. always you know I think we, we don't have any secrets. We will tell you why we put them and just, you know, ask your surgeon why he's doing this or that. And uh, I'm pretty sure everyone has a good explanation for that. Mm -hmm. And is Adrian's used only for tummy tucks or what else? Which? 
surgery drains also... drains can be used for breast surgery tummy tucks aggressive liposuction mm -hmm. thigh lifts i mean if there is a, if you have a you know operation plan and your technique it it you know your technique needs drains definitely you know don't don't be afraid and trust your doctor i mean he usually we we know what we do <laughs> i would say all the time you know what you do uh, Okay, so uh, we are st we still have about 10 minutes left. Please do not hesitate to write your last questions here. And while we're waiting for new questions, we will get back to the comments we have received before the session. And uh, again, back to Miss um, Milagra, uh, who wrote, uh, who wrote uh, the big comment in, in Norwegian. Uh, she's asking, can... Uh, a patient have operations such, such as thigh plasty, breast lift at the same time. It again, I think, depends on a, on a patient. Yeah, I think it depends mm -hmm. on the patient. Um, we have to evaluate you to see how how uh, how you look, um, to feel you know your tissue, to see the, the 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 blood test and so on, and then we can decide. Uh, Usually, yeah, we can, you know, do a few surgeries at once without any trouble. Mm -hmm. And uh, Charlie is asking, lastly, can you use permanent stitches for reverse tummy tuck if there is only a small amount of skin to remove? Can it help to prevent scar stretching or widening? I don't think that permanent sutures will, will help you with that. Um, uh, Permanent, well, sutures in general, they are just, uh, you know, post-operative to hold tissues in place. But, you know, after, after three or four months, the scar will be the structure that holds everything in place. So I think it's, it's, it's no point putting permanent sutures and think that we, they will increase the final outcome. Uh, they will not. Um, probably, you know, they will just stay inside for good and the end result will be the same. Mm -hmm. Now back to breast surgeries. A question uh, by Alison. Yeah. How many years do implants last? Nowadays they last pretty long. I can tell you. They are, you know, the, nowadays implants are very modern and they are really tough to damage. Um, one guy, a very famous professor, he he ran over with a with a car uh, on the implant and didn't Nothing do. Happened? didn't do any damage so I mean probably they will last you more than 15 years but our general recommendation is after 10 years please do examination mm -hmm. visit Just your you. plastic surgeon uh, do ultrasound or do MRI and you know that will give you some answers if you don't have any problems if you are all right with the shape an ultrasound does not or MRI does not show any you know damage to the to the uh, implant itself or any seromas any loose fluid around it mm -hmm. I think that's fine you can you know carry on you don't need to change it just for for the sake of changing yeah and um, when ladies uh, come for breast implant replacement usually the reason is uh, that uh, they want it the shape is not the same as it used to be like 10 yes. years ago so because yes. breast naturally changes yeah. it is sagging down so you want to fix that and um, yeah if it's the reason that the shape it does not you know uh, work for you mm -hmm. that's definitely you know a way to fix it by putting let's say one size bigger or, or putting maybe small and doing a lift procedure at the same time so definitely there are many options but again send us pictures and we will help you. Mm -hmm. And uh, what kind of, uh, Alexandra is asking, what kind of breast implants do we use and what's the difference? Uh, well, usually, you know, most of the implants that we put, put now, they are uh, Motiva brand, mm -hmm. but we, we can offer all kinds of implants at the moment. Uh, um, I think, you know, Motiva is a very good brand at the moment, and uh, we are happy to deal with. Uh, of course, we we have Polytech. We we can offer you others, um, but again, if you have just primary augmentation that you want to improve your breast first time, let's say first time of surgery, 
Um, probably we'll go with Motiva if if there is you know certain problems when we have to discuss and maybe choose another manufacturer. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Doctor. And I will announce that uh, we only have five minutes left, and uh, I'll, um, I do not want to be fast with the answers. So I can. I want to assure everyone that all the questions in the comments will be answered. Uh, maybe not during the slide session, but uh, today, tomorrow, um, we will simply answer you in the comment section as well. So it, they will all be answered. And uh, for the final <laughs> questions, I I, I just want to. For example, read Ms. Sadia's question. Um, if one is going for a mummy makeover, including uplift, can one use fat for the augmentation instead of implant? And I think that augmentation with fat is pretty interesting about topic here. So if we have yes, so fat. augmentation with uh, with fat can can be done, um, but again, it's not 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 a remedy for everything. I need to see how your breasts look. Uh, um, usually, fat grafting to the breast they can mm -hmm. improve the the volume, but not not, not the, the shape, shape. Not the shape. So, probably you will end up if we put only the fat to the breast, you will end up with the same shape as it is, uh, but increase in volume. Mm -hmm. With the implants, you can also correct. You can shape. always correct the shape because the implant itself will give you a new shape that your breast will follow. Mm -hmm. um, so again, it's very individual, mm -hmm. but um, as long as you you know send us pictures and say what you what your expectations are and let's say that you you want you know maybe fat grafting to the breast instead of implants please write it down and you know um, mm -hmm. we will tell you whether you know it's a good thing or not mm -hmm. okay and uh, one more question uh, do you do consultations online or do you need to meet in person <laughs> i would say that it's both we we do the consultations online when our patients send pictures for evaluation, but always when they finally arrive for the surgery, we perform live consultation with the surgeon a day prior the planned surgery and uh, the yeah. final... Pictures, pictures are very good, you know, for the, for the primary treatment plan, but, you know, in medicine you always have to, to touch, to see, to, you know, feel what the tissues are like. And the final decision definitely going to be made the, during our consultation mm -hmm. regarding the treatment plan just before operation. So um, no one is operated with pictures only. No one. Yeah, everyone are evaluated in, in, in person. So, and uh, also Fia is asking, what does it mean to do breast, up, breast lift through the nipple? What does it mean? Um, well, breast lift with through the nipple, it's then then you end up with a scar only around the areola. That's wow. that's that's what the technique says. Um, um, it's in in some cases it's it's possible to do that, but usually it's a minor lift. You, you know, don't expect to, anything to, major about yeah it. anything major with that. So mm -hmm. and she's uh, also asking additionally, do you lose the sensation feeling after that procedure? No. Usually, no. usually you don't you don't lose the sensation. The sensation usually is lost only with the pre nipple uh, uplift. Um, and, uh, it is. It's it's the procedure where we detach completely oh. the the nipple and the areola from your breast and put it as a free put it grafted. Somewhere simply yeah, as a free graft. You find so it. then the mm -hmm. the the nipple definitely will lose sensitivity. Usually, if you if you do regular breast lift with the um, T-scart that you end up with, usually it's rotational, so mm -hmm. the, the nipple is alive, it's still yours. You can lose some of the sensitivity, but not, yeah. not, 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 not uh, all, completely. not completely, yes. That's good news. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, and um, I have to say that we have finished today with the live question and answer session, but of course, as I mentioned before, all the questions me, uh, written here in the comment section will be answered tomorrow. And uh, what I wanted to say also to announce that uh, we will be performing um, live question and answer sessions uh, regularly and uh, I think one session each month. And uh, the next session will be with our Dr. Uh, Thomas or Dr. Todvidas Urbanas. By the way, 
today is a birthday. <laughs> yeah, Todos is celebrating his birthday today. Doctor so. Todos 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 is celebrating his birthday, so we would really like to wish him happy birthday. Yeah, well, he's a dear friend of mine, so um, I hope that uh, I will never get older than him. So. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so thanks anyone, everybody for your attention this evening and I wish you have a pleasant evening re uh, left and um, we'll see you in next uh, live questions and answers sessions. Yeah, so thank you for inviting me and uh, I hope <laughs> I see you someday live. Yeah, yeah. pleasure. <laughs> okay, bye. Goodbye.